Uh, how's it going, YouTube? Um, this is going to be a quick video about Bearded Dragons. It's going to be, you know, just quick tips and stuff on how to take care of your Bearded Dragon. There's a lot of videos out there, and I'm not going to say that my video is going to be any better than anybody else's, but I work at a pet store here in Alaska, and we've got people coming from all over the state to our store because we know a lot more than the rest of the stores are producing out, so... I figured I'd go ahead with some of the stuff I'm learning at my store and give you guys a video and give you guys some better tips on how to take care of your bearded dragon. So, um, first thing I want to get into is where bearded dragons came from. They did come from Australia. Um, they've been captive bred in the U.S. for many years now, though. So, um, Bearded dragons normally get around 16 to probably 22 inches in captivity depending on how well you take care of them, how well they're fed as a juveniles, and how quickly they're going to grow. Um, my bearded dragon in here is, he's about 18 inches now, and he's a little over a year and a half old, so he's probably just going to get another inch or two before he's done growing. Most bearded dragons get their full size within the first year, year and a half. And again, that also depends on how well you're feeding them. It can get somewhat expensive sometimes to feed them because you go through a lot of crickets with these guys. Because um, when they're juveniles, they'll eat a lot of crickets. But as you can see here, this is the full size tank you can end up with for a bearded dragon. This is a 55 gallon tank. You can do something like a 60 gallon. That's also a pretty good size tank to do for them. It's got more floor space on it. Or if you guys are really into woodworking and you've seen some of my videos, I built him a bigger tank but he wasn't using it for the longest time and he just wasn't active enough for me to keep him in there so I moved him into this tank again and now that I've been taking care of him properly and I learned a lot of stuff in my store, he's doing 100% better. So, um, the next thing I'm going to get into is lighting, which is the most important thing for bearded dragons. And you can see, um, I've got three lights on right now. I've got your red heat lamp, which, I live in Alaska, so it stays cold a lot more than most places. That's the only reason I keep it on during the day, because in my bedroom right now, sometimes it can get down to 50 degrees in here, which isn't warm enough, so. Um, also... UV light, and I'm going to get into something about UV lights in a little bit, and um, a spotlight, which is the most important one. Um, there's a specific brand that I recommend. It's the Zoomed Basking Bulbs. These ones are probably the best one because they produce the, the best core of light for the Bearded Dragon, so that's what I always use, and I always keep an extra one on hand. Um, his basking spot's going to need to be around... 100 to 110 degrees it can vary in between but that's going to be at the closest point he can he or she can get to um so then from there he can regulate how warm he wants to be by moving closer or further away from it you want to stay away from heating mats because they don't feel anything on their stomach they'll feel feel everything through the top of their head so you're going to notice your bearded dragon sometimes stand up like this with his arms out just trying to get closer and closer to the light so if you're noticing that he's not seeming to stay warm enough and he's trying to push himself closer check your basking area and make sure it's warm enough so um now about that uv light is no matter what kind of uv light you have whether whether it's a fluorescent or a um indicescent bulb you're going to need to replace it every six months regardless if it burnt out or not because the ver mercury vapors in the light bulbs have burnt up after six months so it's no longer producing the UV rays you need for it. So that's always definitely something to make sure you replace every six months. I just tend to write the date I bought the bulb on the light bulb itself so I know when to replace it. So just always keep an eye out for that next thing is bedding there's a lot of different things that people say about what kind of bedding to use I've used sand all his life and never had a problem with impaction involved with using the sand so but there's a lot of things you can use as juveniles you'll use paper towels because it's a lot easier to clean up because they're going to use a restroom almost sometimes a couple of times a day so you're going to want something that's easier to clean up than having to sift through the sand over and over 
plus when they're younger it is harder for them to digest it than when they get older so but I use sand you can use alfalfa meal um, sandy chips something like that this is a little safer form just really watch how your bearded dragon acts in the substrate you've got them in so the biggest thing about them to tell the difference between males and females is males normally have a more triangular head and the females will have a little more of a rounded off head and also you can't tell really when they're younger you're gonna have to wait till they're maybe six months around eight to ten inches before you can tell is by lifting their tail up and normally you'll see either what looks like a set of balls or you'll end with an indent right in between them or you will see just one bulge in the middle. The, what looks like a set of balls means it's a male and what looks like just an indent bulge in the middle is a female so um, you can always take it to your pet store and have them check what it is. So I'm going to see if I can get a good enough shot to show you what I mean because mine is a male. He's hanging on for dear life but you can see there that he's got two bulges in there and you can see the line in between so he's a male plus you can tell by the pores on his legs so and like I said the more triangular shaped head he's not too happy about me pulling him out right now but so um, the next thing is crickets as a juvenile this is going to be the most important part of their diet they're going to eat a lot of them and I mean here in Alaska we sell them in boxes of 24 and normally that's what I feed them at the pet store I work and I feed them at least 24 a day and then there's salads in the morning and whatnot so crickets as a juvenile is very crucial it's going to be something you do every day and I'd say dust it with your calcium powder which would look something like this you're going to dust it with your calcium powder maybe I do it every Saturday at the pet store and that does just fine for them. Haven't noticed any problems with anything yet. And then as far as an adult, they're going to eat crickets a little less often, maybe twice, three times a week at the most. Um, you're going to normally feed them more salad than anything. And I'm going to do a whole nother video on what kind of salad to feed your bearded dragon because there's a whole nother planet there. But um, mealworms is an option if you can't get any crickets around where you're at but just not so many at a time only do 10 maybe 12 for an adult and then one or two for um, a baby bearded dragon or a juvie bearded dragon when they're growing up um, heat wise the rest of the tank is going to need to sit somewhere around it could be anywhere from 75 80 degrees inside the tank um, that's not under their basking area and that should be a good set temperature, like I said, right now in Alaska. I achieve that by having another heat lamp on during the day. And then during the night, both of these lights over here shut off. And then the heat lamp, being an infrared heat lamp, it won't bother them at all. So that's definitely a good way to go. And, um, once or twice a month, you'll probably want to bathe your bearded dragon. Number one, to get some moisture into his skin so he can shed properly and number two because they actually enjoy taking baths and if you ever notice your bearded dragon tend to get like impacted or anything that's probably the best way to help him relieve some is number one salad only raise the heat and um, bathe them every couple of days and they should end up using the bathroom pretty soon after that otherwise if you're still having problems it's something to take to your vet I'm not going to advise you to do anything other than that because I'm not going to be responsible for that and then the last, well, second from last thing I think I need to show you is, because I've been kind of lazy about it, is their nails do need to be trimmed quite often. Right now, his are getting a little too long, so you definitely need to get it trimmed if they start looking anything like this, and I'm going to be having it trimmed later on today. So, um, last but not least, some people do water dishes. I don't do a water dish because... I've never seen him use the water dish at all, so I've never really seen a point, but you can go ahead and use a water dish. 
you can try and if he drinks out of it that's great if he sits in it that's great sometimes they'll tend to even use the bathroom in it um yeah so that's my information on a bearded dragon you can subscribe and request some more videos and I'll definitely get some more stuff done for you so